Hey, let's talk about encryption and authentication routines that we use in computer science. My name is Shad Sluter, and I'm a professor at Grand Canyon University in Phoenix, Arizona. This video is part of a series of several. We're going to talk about classic encryption that was used in ancient times. We're also going to talk about the modern encryption algorithms, DES and AES, and how they work. We're going to talk about private keys and public keys, and also hashing. So these are all critical concepts to understand in computer science and in computer information security. So let's get started with our first one. So back in the ancient times, there were coding rings that were able to send and receive messages that were important for military. So a, C a Caesar shift is what they would call them. They're pretty simple. You've probably built these to communicate with your friends at some time in your life. You just take a letter and shift it one or two places to the right, and suddenly you have a key that can scramble your alphabet. They're pretty easy to figure out, actually. So here's a web page that will do the work for you. So I'm going to type here just some sentence. This is a good example of clear text. So after typing the text, you can see that I have an encryption, encrypted message on the right side. We can control how it's encrypted with this number down here. So if I put in a 1, you can see that these are shifted one place to the right. So if I put in the letter A, for example, I get a letter B over here. So let's put in our alphabet, A, B, C, D, E, F, and you can see I have B, C, D, E, F, G. Now I can shift the other direction. I can put in a negative one, and so the A shifts around to a Z. Now if you put in something like a 7, then it becomes less obvious. But in any case, we're just shifting letters one place to the left or to the right. Here's another example of a Caesar cipher or Caesar shift. You can see this is from code.org. It's a really good website if you want to learn some basics about computer science. So we have some plain text here, and then we have an alphabet. So if we were to say shift the letters by one place, you can see that the Z now is lifted under the A, and if we can move it further. And so the code then is how you line up the letters, and you can see that the encrypted text now is unreadable. A few pages on in their lesson, they give you a challenge. They say, here is a Caesar shifted message. Now see if you can crack the code. Well, it's been completely randomized. It's not just put in order from A to Z. We have a random substitution. So what you use then to crack such a code is what we would know about our language. So let's down here, we can sort by the percentages it says. So on the blue code down below, this is the number of frequencies that we would have for each letter in a standard English um, sentence. So E is the most common letter in the alphabet. T is used next, A, O, I, N, S. Those are not surprises to you. And look at the end here, Q, X, and Z are way at the bottom. No one ever types with those. So if we know that information, we can take a look at the relative frequency of the orange letters, which are what are used here. So let's sort these by percentages. So now, if I say, well, the letter G occurs the most common up here, I can probably guess that E is a substitute for G. Let's try T, and let's try A. Let's see if this starts to come up with anything. So I look through my code, and I say, look at these letters. The ones that are still orange are unknown. The ones that are in regular text are the ones that I've guessed over here. So I see a letter, or the word here that says T-R-E. Well, I could probably guess that H is really what we're looking for because it's the word the. And now, gradually, the sentences will start to make sense. So we have here the word at and a, that. Let's see if we can figure out some of the others. So with some trial and error, I look at the words that are in the text, and knowing English, I try to substitute what seems to make sense. And then when I'm done, I have a pretty close match that most of the frequencies in English match up with the text that's listed here on the left. There's a few exceptions, of course. You can see that the letter A is not a perfect match here. The letter B and J, they're, they're not perfect. But overall, the, the height of each graph is pretty well close to the standard English. So the point of the lesson is that when you use any kind of letter substitution in Caesar sh shifting, that it's always easy to crack the code no matter how clever you are in scrambling the letters. So what I had in front of me was a complete random order of lettering, and the uh, order did not have any kind of a mathematical formula. But it was still easy to crack if you know anything about English. So some of the key ways to actually encode these 
were to use transposition in the old days. So transposition is just order the letters differently. For example, if you were to write down the phrase, all the better to see you with, it would become uh, reversed if you reversed each word. And so then after you've reversed the words, then you send it through the Caesar shift. Or you might have another way is to say, let's just take each pair of letters and flip those and then send them through the Caesar shift. So there are ways that you could use transposition that would make your Caesar better. And so for many years, this was the best we could do. A decoder ring looked like this. You could have just a brass ring that you turn and your key would be your key to translate any message that was sent. Another method for sending a shifted alphabet was to take a piece of parchment or leather and wrap it around a diameter or a dowel of a specific diameter and then they could write on there. And so if somebody wanted to say this, I am hurt very badly, help, then it would look like this when they wrote it down. You can see that the first row is I am hurt and then very badly comes in the second and third row and then help is the last. And then when you unstring the whole thing, you actually have scrambled the letters in this order that's shown here at the bottom. And so that is another way of doing Caesar shifting. So another way you could do uh, shifting is just to use a monoalphabetic cipher, which means instead of shifting the letters around, just completely randomize them and then use a cipher text that will have a key that matches another. So no shifting, but just randomly ordering. So there are other ways where you don't even have to use letters. You can use like a tic-tac-toe model or something similar and create symbols that match up with words and letters. So you can probably crack these just as well as any other thing. The weakness is that you can always translate from English if you're just doing one-to-one -one, uh, substitutions. Morse code is not really a cipher. It's just a, a substitution. It's not a code. So if you were a Morse code operator in the railroad days, uh, you could probably look at the uh, printout and see dots and dashes and understand it just as well as you could read in English letters. So it's not really a code, it's just a cipher substitution. So if I were to give you a programming assignment to create your own Caesar algorithm, you could do it something like this. You could give each letter a number, just assign it from zero to 25. And then to come up with a new letter, you could use a formula called a mod operator. So a new letter equals the old letter plus some shift value, x, and then use mod 26. So you say, what is mod? Do you know what that means? Well, Google it already and learn it and see what you can do with it. So mod is the remainder of a math problem. So here would be the challenge, to make your own Caesar shift encoder. So let's use Python, write a program that will take a command line that will enter in a free uh, freeform text entry. And then go ahead and use the uh, mo modifications of your code that you wrote and see if it'll do a uh, encoded message for an output. Then see if you can take that uh, uh, encoded message and use the same tool that we sh saw just a few minutes ago at code.org and you can crack your own message. So here's what your uh, program should look like. We should be able to type in the word Python 3 encoder and then I have the letter E for encrypt and then I'd use the number 9 for the shift. Then I would have a text file for the plain text and then an output file called encoded. And that would allow us to take the message in a text file and create a second text file and print it out. And so we have a D for decoding. So we have an encode and a decode operation. And this would be a great operation for working with text files in Python. So I could, I could assign that to you for some homework. Thanks for looking here on Caesar Shift. Remember, there's other videos in this series about encryption. We'll talk about modern encryption and about uh, private and public keys and also the hashing functions that are used commonly for passwords. So thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next video.